of modernization of the development of value systems and uh, have uh, and then it looks like we weren't going to be able to get it in the schedule for the upcoming year of all of this. So we have a great opportunity to get a part two while we still have part one fresh in our minds. Thanks, Dr. Bakhtiana. In the previous presentation, I addressed the recent prevalence trends which showed good evidence that allergies and asthma are increasing everywhere in the world, particularly in urban, more than rural areas, particularly in the rich and educated more than the poor. I also addressed part of the causes, which is the causative allergens are increasing, whether they are foods or pollens, some indoor allergens, some outdoor allergens. And today, we'll address that the presence of allergens by themselves may not be the only factor, but they may need contributory factors to enhance their action. And after that, we'll talk about how that this happened, the mechanism. So the increasing contributory factors, lifestyle is different with modernization. There are more with the new lifestyle, more pollutants indoor and outdoor. There's more stress. The old time farmer, whenever he doesn't have an alarm, doesn't have a radio or TV, whenever he gets up in the morning, say, let me go to the field. Well, the weather was not good. Okay, postpone it until tomorrow. That's easy, there is no stress whatsoever. And we'll ask his neighbor, can you come with me? No, I cannot come. All right, we'll postpone it. But the stress now is a remark on that in itself needs hours to talk about these things. Smaller family size it will come. What's the important that if there is only one child will get more allergies than if there were four or five children in the family. And no doubt obesity is increasing with prosperity and richness and a wide variety of foods and the invitations will get more. Longevity, the allergies are primarily non-fatal diseases, except in anaphylaxis that can happen suddenly, die. Otherwise, there are more and more medications developed, more control measures than the understanding of these diseases. Therefore, the patients will survive, and the genetic predisposition can be transferred since the people live longer and marry and have children. Then, last but not least in this list, is us, the modern medical practice. We are contributing to that. The Western lifestyle, we are cleaner, both in person as well as at homes, and in hospitals, and in workplaces. So we have Deliveries in hospitals, homes are clean, vaccinations, antibiotics, even when they are not needed. If you don't prescribe them, they will look for a better doctor. Indoor living, again, this allows people just to eat and sit in front of TV and play electronic games, they will not be exposed to the sun and vitamin D deficiency is evolving as an important factor, not just in allergy and asthma, but in other diseases. Social events, yeah, we invite each other in groups, on various occasions, and a lot of variety of hors d'oeuvres before the big dinners, and also alcoholic drinks are a must, and a person just doesn't like just to drink juice or water. Well, we are rich, then we buy cosmetics and jewelry. Yes, 
we are not going to put the uh, clay beads around our necks as in the past, or a piece of plant around the armrest. And then also, it is a modern thing, tattoos. And body piercing. It's becoming uh, abnormal if you are not having this, and uh, I think most of you are abnormal in that regard. I had the privilege to be in the medical career for more than half a century. This is my first place for work. It was obligatory that the physicians who are educated and paid by the government for their education, that they serve in rural areas for certain periods. My period was very, very short, fortunately or unfortunately. I say both, fortunately and unfortunately. Fortunate because it was just three months until I got my position at the university. And uh, fortunately that I served because I got experience that I would, did not get it anywhere else. This is the health unit that I was the only physician for the whole village. And I'm responsible for all diseases at any time, day and night. And uh, this is the unit, and this my patients. The men are on one side, and the women on one side. And I have a large, spacious waiting room, more than what I have here at LSU. People can spread around. And this unit was in the fields separated from the village itself by a canal. So people have to cross this canal. And the bridge is half of a palm tree. The previous physician fell into that thing. As you see, I learned a lot of balance in here. And my technician was following me. It was quite an experience that I treasure. And these are my staff. And me. Uh, in the back, the uncle of the mayor. The mayor could not come to be in the picture. And the brother of the mayor. But I have a nurse and a technician who is busy in diagnosing parasitic and infectious diseases. And, uh, and this is a rotating intern. When I moved to the University of Alexandria, oh yes, there were more allergies. In the previous setting, I had only one asthmatic patient for those three months. Allergies, I don't know whether it was hidden, people did not care about it, but not a big deal. When I moved to Alexandria, the University of Alexandria, and I was doing a study on allergies in school children. Yes, I found more allergies in that big city. Moving, by the way, when I looked at this picture, I liked myself. May I recommend to you to take pictures of yourself? Each of you look good, but for now, <laughs> the warranty ran out fast. So please, you'll thank me by taking some pictures. Look at that. I was, please let me spend just one hour looking at myself. <laughs> Moving to Norway, a more developed country, yes, well, there were more allergies in Norway. Moving from Norway to the United States with the prosperity and richness, oh yes. We have allergies here. <laughs> and uh, within short time in the United States, I noticed that allergies are increasing. So this in itself, I don't need data to tell you that urbanization or richness in a country is associated with more allergies. But we have to provide data. Let's look at the global distribution of allergy and asthma, most prevalent in Western Europe, the United States, Australia, New Zealand. 
Immigrant studies show that there's increased the occurrence in Asians who moved to the United States, coming on the West Coast. That's after their arrival, by some years. The Pacific Islanders who moved to Australia, the Indians who loved the United Kingdom, they come without allergies and they develop it later. The German experience, Eastern Europe was completely different. I mean, Eastern Germany, completely different. Once they are united, moved to the war, and allergies increased, became close to the Western Germany. And this shows the study comparing the two parts of Germany. The sensitization, meaning a positive skin test or a positive blood test for IgE antibodies to the common allergens, is more twice in the Western, advanced, rich. And the asthma as a manifestation of a disease is about one and a half times more. Within four years of the unification, in Germany, aero allergen sensitization increased from 19% to 27%. And allergic arthritis increased from 2.3 to 5. That's just within four years. And being, being born in the United States as a rich country puts kids at higher risk of allergen. A long article in the Time magazine. Um, I forget about that. Okay. Right. In the United States, Children born in countries outside the United States had less allergies than those who were born in the United States. The odds ratio was about half for any allergy, any kind of allergy. And in a specific allergies also around that, much less. But after they lived for 10 years or more, they developed much more allergies than those who resided for only two years. So there is a time correlation. This shows the effect of the environment. They came with their genes inside them, not the blue genes outside, the genes inside. And therefore, they developed from the environment. The Western stars, globally, allergy and asthma are most prevalent. I think that's duplication. Look at the effect of urbanization. If we take the same country and use the same study method, the protocol, in Venezuela, atopic disorders were twice in the urban as a rural. Zimbabwe, asthma was twice in urban than suburban. Ethiopia, asthma in urban is three times more in the rural. The mite is a very common allergen indoor. Almost every house has this common allergen. So measuring specific IgE to the house dust mite in patients with asthma, the open circles, versus those who have no asthma, and comparing urban rich versus urban poor, find the urban rich have more specific antibodies to the mild. Urban, poor, they don't have that. The mild loves rich people's houses because of the carpets and the uh, furniture that are upholstered, the feather pillows and the good mattresses, the stuffed animals, A recent study about the global urbanization 
show that the po global population was one third urban in 1960 and became more than half in 2014. That's 60% increase within half a century. And continues to grow. The land that used for farming is being sold to be more buildings in it and more cities are built and towns than villages. Much of the future urban growth is expected in developing regions. In 2016, the World Health Organization reported that 92% of the world's population lives in places where air quality levels exceed the standard. So the pollution is more. The, this study, uh, a friend in Italy, studied the orofecal foodborne pathogens and put an index for their degree from zero up to three, found classified the patients with asthma according to that variable, and found that the asthma is more when there is no orofecal foodborne. And when it's more, look at that, one-tenth or less. Parasites. In Ethiopia, asthma in urban, three times more than the rural. Again, another study in Ethiopia, the prevalence in hookworm infested, and that hookworm is attached to the mucosa, cause damage. Not the pinworm, not the... Uh, vermicularis, but loose one. They have that in non-infested persons, so the prevalence of the hookworm protected by 50%. And there was an inverse association between aeroallergen sensitization, skin testing, and schistosoma, also a tissue invading parasite. And the Amish, that's a good experiment. The Amish in the United States are mainly in the Indiana region and Pennsylvania. And they came originally from Central Europe, particularly Switzerland. So they have the same genetics. And in this study, comparing the Indiana Amish with the Swiss Amish, those who live in farms and those who live in cities. The sensitization in those who are living in cities in Switzerland or better farms and so much more than in the real Amish who are living the very primitive life with animals. Asthma, the same thing. The Amish community in Guyana originally migrated from all I mentioned. Relation and relation, you read about this interesting study about the pacifier when it falls down on the floor and some meticulous woman will take them and boil them. And the other one just say, here it is, suck it, cleaned it by my mouth. She did not mean to put good germs in it. She really meant to clean it by the saliva. But she gave in it good, benign, harmless germs. Let's look here about the eczema and sensitization. Let us focus on the white bar, which those who boiled the pacifier, and the black bar, the pacifier was sucked by the parent and find the eczema and the asthma and sensitization by far much less in infants when the fire was sucked. It was very interesting stuff. Don't laugh at this, please. I could make this graph fancy and colorful, but I just kept it as is, as if it is from the treasures of King Tutankhamun or King Samibani. This is the time when I made the study. We don't have computers. And the, electric, the typewriter was not electric. 
was wonderful, those arms. It was a smudgy, a smudgy tape there. We don't even have the white out in that time. So this is beautiful. This is a Picasso piece. Yeah. So this, the prevalence of allergies and the asthma in school children according to the socioeconomic level. I tag in this because after I reviewed the recent study, I said, gosh, isn't this what I found 50 years ago? Science is science. Look here. We have an equation or a formula for the social level of the family, according to the income, where they live, and degree of education, and so forth. And the families with the high social status, the children have more allergies. And when we look at the school itself, the schools were either in the very poor areas of Alexandria, or in the well, relatively well-to-do, I mean, but the schools that are belonging to the British and the French and the German uh, embassies, where the foreigners and the high-income Egyptians can allow, they can afford to pay the high expensive fees were in these schools. I look different high your instance of asthma and of allergies in them. And when I looked at the type of disease, the family's socioeconomic level for any allergy, yes, more in the rich, rhinitis, very little difference, but asthma is definitely more, and the carrier is more in the high level. So there is nothing new under the sun, but we have to do studies. Air pollution, it contributes to the development and exacerbation, of course, of asthma respiratory disease, affects respiratory mucosa chemically and immunologically. When the person is smokes, it is not just the nicotine like that. There are numerous chemicals that are harmful to the integrity of the mucous membrane and influences these submucosal immune system. It enhances response to the aeroallergens because the mucosa is not healthy. And the diesel exhaust particles in the air from the automobiles increase the allergenicity of pollen when it coats pollen. This is very intriguing work that was proven in vivo and in vitro, the person who did in vitro, Andrew Saxon in UCLA, which was a, a fellow at the same time, but he's much more bright and intelligent and, and a great guy. He asked something from me yesterday and that provided to him. It's great. He studied it in vitro, getting the pollens and coating it with exhaust part. He find they are more immunogenic. And the important fact of the epigenetics, allergies and many other diseases have a genetic predisposition, and they need the environment to interact. The genetics are solid block there, but the environment can change some genetic factors temporarily. The longer the interaction between the environment and the gene will more likely to cause epigenetic new factors, epigenetic. It is reversible if it was for a short time. You remove the environmental factor, and you may remove that, the disease. This is going on. Oh, no. Still, I have more time. Indoors, everybody, every house has these things in it. So you find that the smokers are there. Many gases, some of them are poisonous, volatile organic compounds for many things. This is the, my opinion, the worst. Man-made, intentionally, voluntarily, preventable pollution. Very nice girl, 
Her mother seems to be concerned. She's reading for her instead of putting her in the carpet in front of a TV. That's commendable, but what is this? And the girl is expressing, she's enjoying reading and pointing, but what is this mom? Prenatal or postnatal exposure to maternal smoke enhances sensitization to allergens, mostly house dust mite, which of course the first allergen that any child would be exposed to in the house. Prenatal exposure to maternal smoke seems to be more deleterious than postnatal exposure. Wow. That's not even directly on the face of the child. But the immune system in the fetus is much more fragile, more sensitive, can be easily affected by the tobacco products that can cross from the respiratory tract of the mother to the circulation, to the placenta, to the immune system of the fetus. We're underestimating this fact. The mothers became aware about the harm of alcohol during pregnancy, are not aware enough about the tobacco smoke, even passive exposure. The lung function is bad, and the asthma risk is higher. And these are two studies that show the asthma risk in children of smoking mothers. Can be smoking parents, uh, fathers also, but the reality that the baby spends much more time with the mother. Both of them, the odds ratio, are much higher. These are two studies in Michigan and in Massachusetts about the asthma and about the functionally impairing asthma, bad asthma. Both of them are much more in both counties because of maternal smoking. And the wonderful traffic that fortunately we lack it here. Took me last week in the hour and a half to go from Los LAX to the place that I wanted to go to the hotel. With nerve wrecking and the crowd of the cars. The outdoor air pollutants, particulate matter from vehicles and industry, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, all these are increasing with industrialization and modernization. Children who live within short distance from heavily polluted roads, more cars nearby. The apartments that are cheaper that are built near the traffic roads. The odds of having wheezing in the children, level of the pollution, if there is none, low or high, very obvious. If they lived slightly far away, the risk is less. Pulling samples of this area of, of ragweed that were collected at high and at low traffic areas. Pollen allergenicity was evaluated by immunochemistry and pollen releasing grains. Pollens from high traffic roads had greater allergenicity both quantitatively and qualitatively, compared to samples from low traffic. Quoting the pollen that would be as a catalyst or an enhancer to be more immunogenic. Diesel exhaust particles may act as carrier for the transport of the allergens. And with ragweed allergen increased the specific IgE in the nose may act as an adjuvant enhancing the B cells to produce allergen specific IgE. And it may enhance the development or severity of allergen and asthma through, and this is important to correlate the clinical with some laboratory, strong evidence to provide lab to document some cytokines 
that are definitely increased with this process, increased binding to NFE kappa beta. Medical practice that us. Yes, we are controlling infections. Of course, we have to do that. Caesarean sections are increasing. Some of it is legitimate, and some of it because just the obstetrician has been called multiple times, and it's become by night. Or some social, the mother did, I have been in pain for a long time. Let that baby get out. All right, we will do it cleaner, the surgery faster, and financially profitable and to be delivered in a sterile delivery room. And whenever the child having any little mucus in the throat, meaning cough, has not infection, give antibiotics. And whenever the mother is demanding antibiotic for any little fever, we try to pull in the ears so that we make it red tympanic membrane and said, yes, there is a red tympanic membrane. It appears to be. And we please the parents. Widespread use of acetaminophen. Paracetamol is the name in Europe for it. And this is, was not expected. What does acetaminophen has to do with that? But I'll show you some data. Overuse of antiacids. So many contributing factors. Give me 20 minutes. <laughs> Overuse of antiacid. These benign, so-called benign things that we are using. How it can be contributing under our noses without knowing, my God, you are doing that. Popularity of infant multivitamins. Oh, I'm not going to put data about this. I like multivitamins for babies. Over prescription of multiple medications, yes. I want to prove that I am well educated in medicine and no pharmacotherapy. And the doctor who prescribed multiple medication means doesn't know where is the problem is. Unfortunately, the patients appreciate that doctor, most of them, who prescribe a lot of medication. Well, he's more knowledgeable than the other guy. Latex, universal precautions, yes. Fortunately, many hospitals now deleted latex. Higher life expectancy, as I mentioned before, longer interaction between the genetic predisposition and the environment. Why a person in the 40 and the 60 years old become allergic to a food or a medicine or a pet that has been for all these years well? the interaction and perpetuation of the trait. The microbes, there's an inverse relationship between incidence of allergy and the infections during early childhood. Allergy is less in infants born per vagina to take some normal flora to uh, act as a, a, a deviant, as a fake infection to the immune system and make the immune system go towards fighting infection by developing the T helper 1 subtype. In Venezuela, allergies are less in rural. In Ethiopia, asthma is much less in rural. In Germany, asthma is less frequent in the East. And infants who have older siblings or attend the daycare during the first six months have lower incidence of allergy and asthma. When there is one child in the family, the mother usually take maternity leave. That's the most exciting, the first child in the family. And stays with them. And a room, clean room, prepared already before birth. Wonderful. And relatives who wanted to come to visit say, yes, if you have a call, don't come. Please, don't go. But when there are other children, other children, whether they are at home, 
having any dirt and put it in the face of the younger one. I said, no, don't do that. No, let them do that. They, they go to daycare center, of course, every now and then they are bringing a viral infection. Give it to the baby at home. The more older siblings, the more the chance to bring infection to the younger one. Children who grow up on farms have lower rates of allergies. All these places have more germs. Infants who develop allergies later in life have fewer bifidus bacteria. If you look at the percent of them, first week, the third month, 12 months, and the atopic, much less, the red one, than the non-atopic. And this is a very good study comparing the vaginal versus the C-section children and supplementing with a probiotic. The green line, this is the age from birth, green line vaginal and did not add any uh, probiotic to the formula or to the breastfeed. The blue line is vaginal added probiotic to it. No difference, don't need it. You got the natural flora of the birth canal. The red line here is the C-section babies adding the placebo. This is a clean path for the baby to come out. But later, we'll acquire some. Yeah. And the purple is a C-section, but added probiotic, became similar to that. So no need for probiotics to the baby who is born in vagina. Probiotic studies for prevention as well as for treatment of allergic diseases. The results were very inconsistent. Every now and then a meta-analysis is done about the studies and just both ways. But there is a tendency to show that probiotics may prevent atopic dermatitis. The inconsistency because each study did a different type of probiotic. One or two or three sometimes mixed together. Some studies mixed the probiotic was hypoallergenic form, which is the, by itself will reduce the incidence of allergy. That's why the results are not consistent. But in this Finnish study, early colonization of infants with lactobacillus reduced atopic dermatitis during the first two years by half. Lactobacillus may be administered directly to the infant or via a lactating mother. The probiotics or the cytokines the probiotics induce in the mother will go through the breast milk. Another study in lactating mothers who received the lactobacillus supplement, their breast milk had higher concentration of the cytokine, and their infants had a reduced risk of developing atopic dermatitis. So there is some truth in prevention. This is from the magazines that you see it, particularly in Sunday magazines, you find full of these. You don't need prescription for any short acting or long acting antiacids. PPIs are all over the place. And people are just buying. This, is, this group of medication is the largest sold. People love them. Advertisements are enticing, and everybody has some stomach ache. So this will cure anything. So they are taking it every day. Thank God for the placebo. Antiacids. First, antiacids are against the acid. What does the acid do? The acid is helping digesting the food to be 
And instead of a large molecules, it will be smaller peptides and smaller peptides by the acid and the enzymes. So breaking out. And the less the molecular weight of a protein, the less allergenic. So I am preventing a healthy, normal mechanism by the antacid. Two studies came from a, a, a group in Eastern New York. They started with a the mouse. They gave antacids, interfered with the fish protein digestion, as expected, and enhanced the development of IgE-mediated allergy in the mouse. They moved to a human being study. Good fish allergenicity was greatly reduced by in vitro physiologic digestion. In the lab, impairment of gastric enzymatic or acidity function interferes with protein digestion and enhances the development of allergy. This is the relationship between acetaminophen. Just a meta-analysis shows you several studies instead of going one by one. If the odd ratio is to the right, this means it is a positive. Here it is all of them, and rarely the 95% confidence interval touches the line. But there is strong evidence that the intake of acetaminophen in children or in adults will facilitate allergy. It is just one ingredient in the big meal. It is not like an infectious agent, you give it. You don't need any other thing to cause the disease. There's one brick in a building. Even prenatally, Rastmol, which is the acetaminophen. Data from the prospective Czech European longitudinal study showed the prenatal and postnatal paracetamol exposure were obtained from mothers of more than 3,000 children. Data on asthma were obtained from the pediatrician's records, so it is at least not diagnosed by the parents. Exposure to paracetamol was in 60% postnatally only, and one and a half prenatally, and 5% in both. By 11 years of age, 5% had asthma. The risk was related to postnatal paracetamol exposure, but only slightly with prenatal exposure but it was highest when it is both, prenatal and postnatal. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is evolving as the, the corticosteroids of the new era, apparently, because every special now discovering that vitamin D supplementation helps the disease. And these just three Studies showed maternal vitamin D intake during pregnancy and early childhood wheezing. Maternal intake vitamin D during pregnancy and risk of recurrent wheezing children. Maternal vitamin D intake during pregnancy is inversely associated with asthma and allergic rhinitis in five years old. We are living indoors, air conditioned, and there are enjoying the entertainment that we have plenty of inside the house, and the children don't go out to play because they can be kidnapped. And because the cars will hit them, all that's true. And then, the mechanism, how did this work? Again, the cleanness, which is labeled as the hygiene hypothesis started that term by the German uh, study that compared the East with the West. At birth, the T helper naive cell will be influenced by either putting the child in a they care, exposure to infections, having older siblings to bring them infections, having animals in the house with endotoxins in them that will be acting as a fake infection, microbes, 
and the infections. In this way, the T helper naive cell will go to T helper 1 subtype, which is healthy and we need to fight with. If it was exposed on child exposed to antibiotics and no infections, and that we are be careful about the diet and dust mite sensitivity, allergy, and asthma. Look, that's the T helper subtype too. And this illustrates it epidemiologically. Over the ages, the infectious these experts reduced all these diseases, hepatitis, A, tuberculosis, mumps, measles, and not. In the same time, autoimmune diseases and allergic diseases are going up. You get rid of this, you get this. The intestinal microflora is good. Reduction of intestinal permeability, increased secretory IgA, which is on the mucous membrane, promote development of the good T helper one for infection, generate transforming growth factors that are helpful against the infection. You give antibiotics to infant mice, that's another study than what I showed you there. Infant mice treated for seven days with canamycin, what happens? We eliminate the intestinal gram-negative bacteria but decrease the interferon gamma that we needed. T help TH1, we needed it. Increased the, the cytokines that give us IgE interleukin-4 and 13 will enhance IgE production. Interleukin-5 will enhance the development and perpetuation of eosinophil. These, both of them are for allergy. And this is about older siblings. If the baby has no older siblings, the allergies, even by the age of 20s, much more than have other. And those who have four siblings have the least. Association with atopic sensitization with parasites. To the left means good. And all these studies show that the presence of parasite decreases atopic disorders. So, as they said, have a cow, man. The exposure on farming, a questionnaire survey about children, young children in rural areas in different countries. They are from farming families, compared with non-farmers. Exposure under one year, compared with those aged one to five, uh, about animals and consuming non-pasteurized milk, just coming from the cow, was associated with lower frequencies of allergies and asthma. Continual exposure to stables until age five was associated with the lowest frequency of allergies. What's a protective farm effect in this? Children who grow up in traditional farm environments are less likely to develop asthma and allergy. Studies in Amish and the heterite showed that as well. And although very similar with respect to ancestry genetic, the Amish and the Hatteras between the United States and Switzerland showed the effect of the environment and that although they have the genetic factor. The endotoxin that's from the dirt, from the germs around, are higher in rural than in city homes, the clean city homes. Denver, compared U.S. farm homes have less rural homes in India and Peru, developing countries, are higher than Denver. And U.S. farm bonds, of course, have high. There's inverse relationship between house dust endotoxin and the allergy skin positivity. The skin test negative, 
tends to have higher more and the toxins in their homes. Yes, that's a big subject and it needs hours. But we'll give it two minutes. This correlation of allergy and asthma and obesity. Both obesity and allergy are increasing. In the US, children 2 to 11 years overweight was 19% in 204, compared to 5 percent 25 years earlier. Yes, let the potato chips and the pretzel sell. Let the Big Mac and the advertisements of French fries that, and give it for free. In the U.S. skin test reactivity to any of six common allergens increased from 22% to 42%. Overweight is associated with increased C-react protein, a marker of inflammation, mark, and systemic inflammatory markers in obesity. In the past, we thought it is a matter of weight for the asthmatic to carry. I say, well, you need to reduce weight because you are carrying extra weight. It is deeper than that. Looking at the BMI, classify them into lean, overweight, and obese. Compared to lean asthmatics, obese patients had increased systemic inflammatory mediators, plenty of them. It is not just a weight. There are mediators of inflammation inside. And even obesity of the mother during pregnancy. 14 studies included a large number of mother-child pairs. 12 of them reported maternal obesity during pregnancy. Maternal obesity was associated with higher odds of asthma or wheeze, ever or recurrent. Each one kilogram per square meter of BMI was associated with a 2 to 3 percent increase in the odds. This is a real fact. Obesity during pregnancy is the risk for childhood asthma. Last, but not least, the anger of Mother Nature. People say it all the time. We didn't have all these hurricanes, tsunamis, forest fires, volcanoes, and floods in the past. Why only over the recent 20 years we are getting this and it's increasing all over the world? Of course, it has a tremendous effect on that. The Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans caused a lot of respiratory disease called asthma. And the allergy, the mold there was incredible. So that is a big issue. Let me come from the one minute for the global warming, although it's a very important issue. Global warming that is being denied by some or rather by one. This is a fact. It's not a fake fact. I'm going to give you real facts. That's the temperature in the globe. Global temperature is rising. That is a fact. The frost-free season in the US is getting longer. Frost-free means there is no cold. Look, in the northern parts in particular, and even in southern parts. The newspaper, right, this is just last month. Since 1997, the minimum annual area of sea ice in the Arctic has dropped by about 40%. That's a fact. Alaskan glacier melting at fastest rate in 400 years. That's a fact. 60 times more snow melt occurs today than did 150 years ago. Tropical Pacific has warmed because of increased greenhouse. Facts. The sea surface temperatures up, temperature over oceans, water vapor, air temperature, sea level, ocean heat content, temperature over land. On the other hand, the sea ice is down, the glacier and the ice sheets is down, and the snow cover is down. That's a fact. How can anybody say it's a fake? It's not true. 
Let that person believe this then. That's a strong evidence of global warming. What does global warming do? More plants, more pollens, prolonged season of the pollens, enhance the pollen bursting and spread of the allergens from the pollen grain, more mold and spore, more ozone, more stinging insects, and more outdoor activities. So in summary, prevalence of allergen to asthma is higher in urban than rural, increased in recent generations of the same population, increased the individuals who migrated from developing countries to industrialized countries, more exclusion from military service because of asthma and the insect sting anaphylaxis, increased the indoor and outdoor allergens, switching the immune system from the fighting infections to hypersensitivities. And so allergen and asthma are definitely increasing and are expected to continue. It's not just a better diagnosis by allergen by physicians. Significant impact on the quality of life, even the so-called simple allergic arthritis. There are some adults tell me I am a different person because of you opened my nose. Well, you were neglecting it for years because I didn't think it's a big deal. Increasing medical cost caused by increasing exposure to allergens and to multiple contributory factors, genetic, epigenetic, and environmental factors are responsible for this. And it is an immunologic mechanism for it. And We'll conclude, but I pray up, please. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great presentation, and that was really nice having the two close enough that um, we had the first in our minds, so that was really good. Um, I know in the interest of time, we can take minimal questions. Any single question? I don't have a question, but just a little addition uh, to the matter of uh, sort of exhaust fumes, if you're in an experimental setting and you want to raise an antibody in a rodent and or a rabbit, uh, it's what you can do is to mix the antigen that you're going to want to get the antibody in with something called Freund's adjuvant, which is a kind of oil. So you inject a mixture of the Freund's adjuvant and and the, uh, and the antigen into the foot pad of the animal or some other place. And, the and, and uh, that uh, oil then increases the immune reaction and causes a better antibody response in the animal. Well, part of diesel exhaust is unburned particles of diesel oil. It comes out the smokestack. And that's going to pick up your allergens and it's going to deliver them to the lungs of these children who live by the roadway. So it's a, it's a remarkable uh, a way of uh, raising antibodies in this child. Unfortunately, they're bad antibodies. Yeah. Thanks, Len. Thanks, All right. So I think we'll conclude Graham Round in the interest of time. Again, thank you, Ted. Yeah,